Hello and welcome to the session on searching methods in 3D in the Plaxis LE software. My name is Murray Fredland and I will be walking you through the training today. To give a brief outline of the video today, we will give an introduction of searching in the context of a 3D model. We will particularly examine the extension of 2D searching methods to 3D in this video. We will talk briefly about determining slip direction, which is now an additional parameter that needs to be determined in a 3D analysis. Then we will discuss fully specified searches for back analysis. For a forward analysis, we will cover the moving wedges, grid and tangent, entry and exit, slope search, and the cuckoo search methods. We will also discuss the use of augmenters to the searching methods in order to consider advanced rock mechanics aspects of faults, weak surfaces, and the 3D anisotropic influence of bedding planes. So to back up a bit, the limit equilibrium method requires identification of the critical slip surface through the generation of many individual trial slip surfaces. Out of all the trial slip surfaces, that trial slip surface with the lowest factor of safety is selected as the critical slip surface. Some searching methods generate a series of trial slip surfaces that are unrelated to each other. Other searching methods update subsequent searches based on previous results. So the limit equilibrium method allows the user to sort the list of trial slip surfaces from the lowest to highest factor of safety. And the user is able to examine the trials closest to the failure to see if alternative failure mechanisms exist. The searching methods are somewhat generally categorized into either brute force methods or semi-automated semi methods. Much of the more recent research has involved translating the searching methods to a full 3D analysis. This is therefore much of the research work involved in producing a 3D version of Plaxis LE was translation of searching methods to perform well in a 3D environment. Plaxis LE has implemented a comprehensive amount of searching methods in the 2D version of the software. These methods are loosely categorized as circular, composite, or non-circular methods. The searching methods for circular and composite circular include classic methods such as grid and tangent methods or the entry and exit method that you're well familiar with, as well as more advanced semi-automated methods such as the slope search method, the auto-refine method, and the cuckoo search method. Fully specified slip surfaces are available in both circular and non-circular implementations. So search methods for non-circular search include the block search methodology, Greco's method of moving hinge points around, as well as the path search, the cuckoo search method, as well as dynamic programming method for searching through a stress field for the minimum factor of safety. So this table summarizes the searching methods in the Plaxis LE software. The tables are organized roughly by circular or ellipsoidal searchers, searches and non-circular methods. The second column shows whether or not the methods are manually set up or somewhat automated. The 3D column also shows which methods have been extended into 3D as well as could potentially be included in the multiplane analysis mode. Multiplane analysis allows spatial searching across a large area. In 3D it's also possible to augment the searching such that slip surfaces consider wedges, weak surfaces, or bedding planes. Such modifications are called augmenters. So there is also an optimization method in 3D that allows an ellipsoidal slip surface shape to be optimized to a non-ellipsoidal shape, which can potentially follow zones of weakness. Overall, the 3D searching in the software is comprehensive and allows for consideration of many different geostrata situations. The augmenters particularly make the searching powerful in rock slopes. So in three dimensions, the direction of slipping must be considered in the analysis. So Plaxis LE offers two different methods of calculating the slip direction. The first method is a brute force trial and error method in which the software tries a number of different directions. Plotting the factor safety versus the slip direction in this type of analysis will typically result in a U-shaped type of graph. The most optimal slip direction is the direction at the lowest point in the graph. The second method involves the software automatically calculating the sliding direction as part of the Chang and, and Yip method. The example in this figure is a bullnose of an open pit slope in which the direction of possible movement was determined through analysis. 
So we will start discussing the various searching methods from simple to complex. The most basic method of specifying a slip surface is the fully specified method. And with this method, we can specify a slip surface using wedges, general surfaces, and or ellipsoids. And this method would typically be used in the back analysis of a known failure event. Uh, so in this method, and as shown by the picture, a slip surface can be formed by many different uh, weak planes that intersect together to create a slip surface. When there are many different wedges specified, then the software always picks the upper point in terms of the z-coordinate of all known surfaces. General slip surfaces are formed from a mesh or a grid. And ellipsoids may also be specified to define a known slip surface. Now, moving wedges are a slight variation on wedges that each plane, each wedge plane on each side of the slip can become multiple parallel planes instead of a single wedge plane. With moving wedges, then a minimum slip surface <clears throat> is selected from all possible combinations of wedges on all sides of the slip surface. The grid and tangent search method is a very old and common method of specifying a series of circles using tangent points and circle centers. In 3D, the circles become ellipsoids, but the concept is the same. So a grid of centers, which can be a cube in 3D, is specified. Then tangent planes are always horizontal and may be at multiple or elevations in the, in the model. Uh, the entry and exit method is also a common method in 2D and translates well to 3D implementations. Entry and exit lines are defined in 3D space, uh, and they might have lateral spacing in the third dimension. So incremental trial points on both the entry and exit lines can be specified as, whether, uh, as well as a number of trial radii for ellipsoids. The ellipsoids in 3D always have their center line matched with the entry and exit lines. And so a range of aspect ratios of the trial ellipsoids may also be, be specified with both methods. So let's talk about the slope search. It's a useful 2D technique and has been extended to 3D analysis. So in this method, a full trial surface is specified and an ellipsoid could follow any part of the specified slip surface, but its center line must follow the trial slope search. So slope search lines can have lateral variation in the third dimension as shown in the figure here. Uh, aspect ratios can also be specified as well as the user can specify that the ultimate shape could be a hybrid ellipsoid in which uh, since the original ellipsoid is modified to be a hybrid ellipsoid. The cuckoo search is a powerful searching technique in a two-dimensional analysis. In the software, the cuckoo searching method has been extended into 3D and may be used alongside a single plane to search for a minimum slip surface. Lateral variation in the third dimension may be specified as well. On highly variable topologies, it is recommended that the cuckoo search be used in conjunction with the multiplane searching method as shown in the below figure to allow comprehensive searching of a slope. Variations in aspect ratio can also be specified as well as the hybrid ellipsoid searching shape. Searching basically works in Plaxis LE in that a fundamental shape is specified, which is either a wedge, a general surface, or an ellipsoid. Then that basic shape can be modified or augmented by wedges, weak surfaces, or anisotropic bedding planes to try to achieve a lower factor of safety. Thus, the augmenting surfaces are a very powerful feature, especially when searching through faulted rock masses and areas where a weak surface may come into play. So the method of implementing search augmenters can be found under advanced settings. The user can control how the augmenting is implemented in the searching method and will have an important effect on the total number of trial slip surfaces. When beddings are included in a model, the software will generate each trial based on the augmenting surfaces process and evaluate against each bedding layer, which will further augment the results. The augmenting surface settings is used in combination with ellipsoidal search methods. Search augmentation may be specified in three different modes. With every combination mode, the software evaluates every combination of every augmenting surface, whether it's inactive or active, and it will be tested as individual trials. 
This is the default option. If the option one at a time is selected, for each generated ellipsoid there would be a trial ignoring all augmenting surfaces and then one trial for each wedge and weak surface defined in the model. Uh, with the all at once option, all augmenting surfaces are active at the same time in every trial. The number of, uh, of augmenting surfaces does not affect the number of trial slip surfaces. In this, uh, in this option, only the uppermost surface of all weak surfaces is considered for a slip surface. So in summary, the Plaxis LE software has many searching methods that have been implemented in 3D. The searching parameters dictate how the solver searches for the critical slip surface in terms of where to search, how extensive the search will be, and how long the search will take. Many people ask, how long will a limit equilibrium analysis take? And the answer is essentially tied to how many trial slip surfaces are explored in the analysis. We've covered the general search methods of grid and tangent entry and exit, slope search, cuckoo search, moving wedges, and fully specified. And we've looked at how search augmentation can allow us to augment our 3D slip surface shapes through weak planes such as wedges, faults, and bedding planes. Thank you for your time, and this concludes the video on 3D searching methods.